All right, so uh, I've got this uh, little animation here of simply a ball bouncing up and down. And I just want to kind of go over how to create a camera uh, and how to go about actually rendering out this animation and bringing it into Premiere Pro, compiling those images together and then exporting out an MP4, which you can then eventually upload to YouTube. So for this animation here, you don't necessarily have to create a camera in order to render out a video or a series of images. However, I just want to go through how to actually do that. Um, so if you go ahead and set up your camera however you'd like, um, I'm going to go ahead and hold control and hit C on the keyboard. When you do that, it's going to create a camera based on your current perspective view. So you can see here up at the top right hand corner, it says Fizz Camera 001, just to indicate that I'm currently selected on my camera. If I go ahead and hit P on the keyboard for my perspective view, you can see I now have that camera created within my scene. And now I can kind of go about working in my perspective view and still have that same camera shot kind of locked in place. And I can snap to that view whenever I'd like. So I've got my camera set up here. Here. I want to view back inside that camera so I'm just going to go ahead and click on perspective cameras and then physical camera 001 again uh, and I have an animation here my animation is just simply this ball bouncing up and down when I'm looking through my camera lens it's really important that we're looking with the proper save frame set up so I'm going to go ahead and hold shift and hit F on the keyboard here and you can see what I, what happened to my viewport is it's just kind of like simply shrunken down the viewport a little bit uh, I'm, I'm ensuring that as I'm viewing through my camera I'm looking at this with the proper aspect ratio. Now you can see my aspect ratio is currently set up to a widescreen format, which is typically what you're going to have it set up for a lot of a lot of media these days. Um, you don't always have that set up by default though. Max typically has it in more of a 4x3 format uh, by default. So in order for us to change that, we're going to go up to our render settings here, right where our render setup, little teapot, and inside our render setup, I'm just going to ensure that my output size is set to HDTV. So when you first open up Mac, sometimes it's set to custom here. You can kind of see I've changed that over to custom. It's 4 by 3 Typically, I want to have this set to HDTV. Uh, and I don't really want to render out a 1920 by 1080 HD. Again, the higher the resolution, uh, the longer your render is naturally going to be. Right? It just simply takes more memory to render out. So I want to still work with that same aspect ratio, but I'm going to work with a 1280 by 720 value. So you can kind of see off to the right, we've got these four little presets. Again, these presets are really, really great if you want to test your render. Maybe you're looking at some, like, let's say, motion blur or, or specific bit of lighting, whatever it might be, right? Uh, you may not want to sit there and render out a very large video file. Again, it's a nice way to still hold that same aspect ratio, but then just simply do a faster render. Smaller video, but faster render. Uh, up at the top here, my time output, I can see I've got my active time segment currently set up here. Uh, I've got that set up because I'm only rendering out 20 frames. You can kind of see it down at the bottom. I simply want to render out a bounce up and down of this ball. Uh, once I have that render, I'm then going to take that into Premiere Pro and compile those images and just simply copy that little video over and over again inside my timeline. And you're going to see how I'm going to create this kind of like infinite looping animation or looks like, looks like it's going to be an infinite looping animation. So now that we're ready to actually render out our animation, uh, we need to actually specify where these rendered files are going to go. So we're going to go ahead and simply click on our little files button here inside our render setup. Uh, and typically what you would want to do is you want to create some sort of folder that's going to act as your output folder. Uh, it's going to be the place where you're going to be storing all of your either your images or your video files. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my output folder here that I've already created. And down below we have our file name. Uh, I simply want to name this whatever my animation might be. For right now, I'm just going to name it Bounce. Uh, what's going to happen is Max is going to add uh, an additional uh, bunch of numbers at the end of your name. So it's going to be 0001, 0002, so on and so forth for every single frame that we have. And that naming convention is really important because that's what's going to allow us to actually compile those images inside Premiere Pro. So we want to ensure that we have our save as type currently set to JPEG file. Again, we render out image sequences. Typically, you don't want to render out a video file. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead up here inside my render setup and I'm going to go ahead and click render. So you can see here, uh, typically in Max, you're going to get this little preview window 
this preview window, every time I have this kind of line coming down my screen, it's creating a brand new image file for me. Now, I, you can see I do have a little bit of shadows going on here, but I don't have anything crazy happening in my scene, so my render time is pretty quick. Um, things that is going to you know slow down your render is the, the bigger the video size, it's going to slow it down. If I have a lot of geometry, if I have reflections, um, ray trace shadows, a lot of different lights, just a lot more things going on in my scene, all of that is going to bring up your render time, right? If I'm doing anything, you know, in terms of like realistic rendering, that's obviously going to take much longer. For this, it was very fast. So I've got my images rendered out. We're going to head on over inside Premiere Pro now. And inside Premiere Pro, I've got a fresh project. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double click down at the bottom left hand corner where it says import media to start. I'm going to double click on that window. And when I double click on that window, I'm looking for the output folder or where all of those images have been saved to. So you can see I'm in my output folder here. I've got my 20 images saved out. I've got 20 images because I had 20 frames in my animation. And the way that we want to load this into Premiere Pro is I don't want to actually simply grab all of these images and then drag them in as a group. Uh, I simply want to select the very first frame here. So it's actually not frame one necessarily, but it's frame frame zero, so bounce zero, 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 zero. And I need to ensure that I have image sequence turned on. So it's this little option here, just below this little set or this little window of images. Again, I need to ensure image sequence is turned on. That is going to actually bring all of these other images that are following this kind of incremental naming convention into Premiere Pro as a small little animation or a small little video. You can kind of almost think of it as like a little flip book or a little sketchbook where you have a bunch of images or a bunch of pages drawn out and they all kind of work together to create an animation. So we're going to go ahead and hit open here. When we hit open, you can see I now have that animation down at the bottom left hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and click down with my left mouse button and simply drag it over and then drop it inside my timeline here. So you can see I have a video inside that timeline. Now currently we haven't actually created a video file. Uh, we simply have a series of JPEGs placed inside Premiere Pro, basically like a JPEG sequence. What I want, I'm going to do here is I want to actually create a video file from this animation. So to do so, uh, just to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm just going to copy this video uh, a few times here, just to basically have a couple different bounces, right? You can see I've got three different bounces here. All right, so now that I've got my little animation in Premiere here, I am ready to export out my video file. So we're simply going to go up to the top left-hand corner and we're going to click on File and we're going on down to Export and then clicking on Media. Again, I'm going down to Export and clicking on Media. Uh, you can hold Control and hit M as a hotkey to bring up this window as well. So you can see here, uh, this is our Export Settings window. There's not too many things that we want to actually go in and change here. Uh, really, the biggest thing is if I'm preparing a video for YouTube, I want to ensure that my encoding format here is set up so that I'm working with H.264. Uh, some people are starting to use now H.265 as well. I personally don't really have much experience with that, but if you do, go ahead and utilize that. But I, I have learned H.264 in the past, and that's what I've been using for, for a decent amount of years now. Uh, again, H.264 is just simply a video format or a video codec that's going to be setting this up so that way it encodes it so it holds a lot of the quality of our animation and our video. Uh, it's going to hold that that widescreen aspect ratio, a lot of the high definition that comes with that, uh, and it's going to bring down the file size quite a bit so that our upload to YouTube isn't going to be crazy. Now, I also want to ensure that I have the proper output uh, destination for this video. Kind of the same thing that I would do inside 3ds Max when I'm choosing the output destination of all my images. So we've got an output name here and you can see it's just simply bounce 0000. It's just taking the name of that very first frame that we loaded in. I'm going to go ahead and click on that blue text there. When I click on that blue text, it's going to open up a save as window. Uh, typically, I usually just save this final video file in my output folder, but again, that's completely up to you. You can save that wherever you'd like. Uh, I'm going to name this bounce final. 
Again, the name, totally up to you, whatever makes the most sense. Our save as type here is gonna be an MP4. Uh, we can't actually change that. Uh, that's just simply what the codec is, or what the you know the video file is going to be with H.264. So you actually do wanna have MP4. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save. Once we've done that, you can also choose to turn off export audio. Uh, for this, we don't have any audio. Typically, when we're rendering things out of 3ds Max or 3D packages, they're not actually being rendered out with audio. So for right now, I'm going to turn off audio. We don't really need it. Not that it's going to add a lot of memory or anything to my file. And once I'm done here, I'm going to go ahead and hit export. So I clicked export. You can see it just kind of thought for a second. Um, something like this, again, there's really not much happening. We're working with about two seconds of animation. So the video file is not going to be huge. Uh, so the export's not going to be huge either. If you're working with a, a rather large video, so let's say you're actually editing together some sort of like cinematic for a game, then yeah, you might actually have a, a decently long export for that final video uh, that's going to be uploaded to YouTube. So just kind of looking uh, for that final video file that we got here. I'm going inside my output window, or my output folder rather, and I've got my bounce final video here. Just opening it up, and we can see we've got our video file created, right, of that animation that we had inside Premiere. So again, this is, this is the video file that I can then take to YouTube. I can then upload that, and then I'm done.